So, IFI says we have something new coming out. And this is after I review the... Wait, was it after? Probably right before I released um, the Zendak review. And I bought that. And I bought it. And I reviewed it. And I sold it in the yard sale. Actually, have I sold it in the yard sale yet? I, maybe I haven't. I don't remember. I don't know where this lines up. But they're like, hey. 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 Shush in my phone. Do you want to review something new? And I'm like, okay. Because... IFI has had a pretty okay track record. Not great. Not everything they put out is, is a winner. That XDSD, like portable that was made of mirror material that got all iffy and the volume knob was uh, and it, it could have been great, it wasn't. And some of the bigger units uh, have reliability issues and they've sort of fixed that. But that Zendak, my God. So if you want to skip this review, all you have to know is this. If you saw my review on the Zen deck and it was interesting to you, here is the portable Zen deck. That's it. That's my whole review is about to be just that. Now, IFI has decided to put on an actual high res audio sticker on this, and it's the biggest one I've ever seen. It's it's like three quarters of an inch square. And um, as far as their naming convention goes, like Zen was with like that crazy Z. E N O. This has got a multicolored hip deck. Woo, it's hip and cool because it's the hip deck. You get it? So there's a lot of touch in their like marketing department. But I don't care. Because that fucking thing. That fucking there's a fly in here. I'm gonna kill it. That fucking thing um outperforms what I thought it would do. And I don't have the main competition to it here, but I have reviewed both things that I consider the main competition for the hip deck, which would be the Fio Q1 Mark II, which I reviewed two years ago, and the little portable deck amp balanced output, and then the Topping NX4, which is the powerhouse of the little tiny portables. And that thing was more money. We should probably talk about the price. Because I've only found, I haven't found this on Amazon. It's only on like random weird, weird websites on the internet. But $150 is roughly where we're looking. The uh, Fio is $100. The Topping NX4 is like $170. So it's right between there. It's, it's aiming for this middle ground of like, hey, do you want an entry level? Uh, not this. I, I brought this out because I'm going to talk about this in a bit. This is, of course, the XDO XDO 5 Plus. And it's my baby. And there's a lot of things that this $260 unit does that this also does, or this does better. So we're gonna start by pointing out the three wires it comes with. And I don't know, I don't usually start with wires, but let's look at the three wires it comes with. Because you have to focus. Actually, we should probably just pause that, turn it off, unplug it, and look at it. Let's start with that. Um, first of all, that color that that color so i mean i praise almost any color that isn't gray or black or silver because i'm fucking tired of it so if you want to call it the hip deck and you want to color it like this teal and i'm pretty sure the gopro's color is not as accurate as it needs to be it's it's miku's hair it's definitely like what you would imagine metallic miku's hair would be is what this is and I think they might come out with other colors. I mean, the hip deck logo has one that looks like this. Might be a purple and a, an orange one day. But even if it only came in this color, I'm for it. I'm all for it. Because so it looks good. I mean, it's a it's a aluminum cylinder. It's not going to look bad. The good side. Here's the top. Volume knob. Beautiful. Machined. Metal. Knurled. Hey, Fio. Hey, Fio, you know your M15 fucking thing? How, why does this player have a better knob than yours? And yours is $1,300, Fio. Fio! We're going to use that in a second to hook up to this, by the way. Um, so depending on which way you want to consider the front, I guess the way with the IFI, you get a 35 millimeter output. You get a 4.4 Pentacon in this output. You get your power and volume knob. You have two buttons here which are, I feel like the exact same buttons on the Zendak. They're a little like loose fitting metal and it's not a, it's not a negative. I like that feel like, cause you could actually, there's like a tactile feel and you bounce off it and you could 
Those are very, very the good feeling buttons. When you turn the knob, it feels good. You get the LEDs on the left and right, and those show input uh, levels. Hold on. Let's see. The format LEDs for kilohertz, green, yellow, cyan, blue, magenta, and off. So even though it's currently lit up green, which would be 44, 48, 88, 96, um, it should actually probably be off because there's no valid signal or well, whatever. Magenta is MQA, blue is DSD, cyan is also DSD. So there's your indicators. Each one of these buttons here, and I'll lean back so that we're in the darkness, has its own LED. The big button is the X base and the little button is the power match. And we're going to talk about phrasing in a second, but we're going to keep searching the unit. The back side has two USBs and a high res audio sticker that's put on by a blind person because it's like down and crooked, but that's fine because I'm going to tear that shit off sooner or later. You get this little green light. So this separate LED indicator shows you the battery life, which I just charged this unit because it was, I had run it all the way down. Uh, white would be greater than 75. Green is currently greater than 25. So it's somewhere between 25 and 75. Um, red, which is where it was, is less than 10. And red flashing, no, greater than, it's less, so that's between 10 and 25. So flashing red is uh, under 10%, which means it's going to die. So I didn't really need to charge it just for the review, but I, I wanted to give it at least more than less than, more than less than, more than less than half a charge, full charge. So we're back to this. IFI has this, like, I don't know, it's like a sexual kink, where they need to put a USB-A like, like this, this kind of USB, in the unit itself, like, shoved down there. <laughs> and I'm, I don't quite get it, because, I mean, every, like, a normal unit, here's, here's the X2O, you open the back, and there's two USBs. A charge USB-C and a USB in USB-C for data. And this has a charge USB, USB-C, and a USB in for data. Only it's a fucking A. So that means you can't just hook it up like this to your computer. This isn't this does not work. This wire that they give you, this USB-C wire which I started off, remember talking about wires about seven minutes ago? This is just for charging it. This USB-C port, they don't have a choice that you could use either one for data. You have to use the big one for data. This is just a charging port. It says in the manual, it's just a charging port. Why would you even try to use a USB? I mean, you're supposed to hook this up to your phone, right? So you're supposed to slap it to the back of your phone. Why on earth would anyone want to use a USB-C to USB-C wire? When you could obviously use one of these, which is the other wire it comes with which is branded IFI and is a female USB to USB-C. So you have to use this type of wire, OTG wire. And in order to hook it up to the computer, like I had it, they provide you this, which is very stiff, very stiff. And you have to use it or something equivalent to it because, and you have to make sure that the head fits because, you know, there's not a guarantee that when you get an extension like this, it's going to fit. And then this plugs way in there. And the only thing I could think of is that they're deathly afraid, deathly afraid that you're going to break the connector. And you pretty much can't, like, I'll give them this. You pretty much cannot break that. That's, that's, that, because the actual housing is inside of it a like half an inch. So once you plug it that far in, you, you just, you can't, you'll break the wire way before you break the, anything on the unit. So, Biggest flaw, probably still that. I mean, I have a ton of USB extension cables, but I'm sure most of you don't. But I'm also sure most of you have USB to USB-C, USB-C, just to plug into things. Or you have just regular USB cables. But no, 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 no. We're, this is our data cable, and you're going to get used to it. When you want to plug it into your phone, or in this case, I'm going to test it with the M15. There you go. And here's the weird thing. This cable is smaller than the space because they need to accommodate that. So if you put it in there, there's a giant space around so you could bend the shit out of it and maybe break it that way. I don't know, I don't know. Why put a USB-C to charge it and not a USB-C for data? What, what? 
I'm just gonna scratch my eyelid down. It's fine. It's fine. I'm I'm freaking out, but I'm gonna give this a hell of a recommendation. That's a weird that's a weird quirk. Fucking IFI has been known for its weird quirks. I talk about all their power filter stuff, which all works, by the way, and I'm gonna just for the sake of argument link to all their power stuff that I have reviewed or I have been reviewing. Like the little uh, power conditioners and I have a, a plug thing over there. If you could see there's like a white, like looks like, I don't know, looks like a vibrator battery. But that's all there, just power conditioning. Just just little little touches here and there that I've been trying to use, trying to get a review out and I just can't seem to a review of their stuff because it just like, there's no problems in my apartment really. So thank you iFi for loaning me your power stuff. Links in the description for all their power equipment. Pretty much everything works as it says it does. I just ha can't demo it, so it's hard for me to make the review. Back to this. This thing is an IFI Zendak on the go. It only costs 20 bucks more than an actual IFI Zendak, like the desktop version. And it's built as well as you can build an aluminum case. It's built really well. The these buttons feel solid. The knob feels solid. Oh, and also the knob is just the right size that if you put it down, you can't turn it on the table or surface. It is absolutely flush with the end of the case, which I'm thankful for because I was kind of worried when it's if it's in my pocket that it was going to get just rubbed around. And it's just it's just it's perfect. It doesn't stick up too far. The this when you buy this unit and then you buy the Bluetooth adapter. It comes with an actual shield you can screw on to protect the volume knob from getting turned. So it's like that that's a thing, but this doesn't need it. It's nice and flush. I want to make it make sound. So we'll go back to the computer in a second. Let's turn on the um the FIO. And I think there's an order for this. Because it has its internal battery. And if you want it to use its internal battery, you need to have the unit turned off then you plug it in and i could be very wrong with this please verify future zeos future zeos let's get this up and then you turn it on and then the fio here says hey do you want to be able to access this usb device and say use this device by the device by default so now the fio m15 should be playing not out of its own internal amp dac but out of the hip dac and let's pull up a random pair of headphones, and this is my um, oh, beautiful Klipsch HP3s. And we're gonna make sure our volume is down. We're gonna make sure bass and, uh, I'm just gonna call it bass and gain. We're gonna get into that in a second. J -j -just, just, just, just don't get distracted. But we're gonna get into the naming conventions of IFI and I just, it's the same as their USBs. Okay, um, it's an IFI Zendak, which I fucking loved, the power it put out and everything, that's this, this puts out half a watt, 400 milliwatts, I, I think 16 ohm, let me double check the uh, that number for you, 400 milliwatts at 16 ohm, 2 volts, 2200 milliamp hour battery, it handles 32 by 384, uh, DSD, DXD, MQA, it, it's, 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 the, it's the whole nine yards. And it's clean. As a whistle. Whistle. I brought out my S8s, which I have determined are still amazing. After having them for weeks, having the review finished for weeks, I'm still listening to the Moondrop S8s. Trust me, it, that doesn't sound like much to you because it's like, oh, Zeos, you just use it. The fact that I'm picking up an IEM well after it's done and actually using it means something. And I use this with the balanced ends to check this for noise. And in the quietest environment possible with the music paused on high gain and you turn it up, there's like this noise. I, I don't actually make it sound in my mouth because my computer's running and that's probably equivalent to it there's like almost no there's almost an undetectable noise floor on high gain with an im which you don't need high gain we're gonna, i'm gonna say high gain because i'm not gonna say power match and without power match enabled or high gain on it's dead fucking silent to my ears i can't hear anything so this is a clean dac amp 
Oh, I should point something out before I move forward. I, I talked about the NX4. I talked about the FIO Q1 Mark II. Those are DACs and amps. You plug a digital signal into it and you get an analog signal amplified out. Or on those, you can put an analog signal into it, use it as just an amplifier, and it'll put out a more amplified signal. You can just use a three and a half millimeter jumper. This does not have that option. This is only digital in, USB only in, signal out, power out, that's it. There is no way to analog and plug in. There's just digital and out. There is no RCA or, or three and a half millimeter that you can set, oh, plug it into here and then it'll amplify it back. It doesn't do that. It don't do that. So that's something to think about. I don't know if you use it as much as I would. When I was doing the sound demos last year, I was using the FIO Q1 Mark II, feeding it out the analog signal from my Zoom recorder, or my Tascam recorder probably at the time, amplify, re-amplifying it and putting it balanced into my, well, those. And so you can't do that with this. This needs a digital signal. Just to point out, just to pointing it out, just, I'm just pointing it out. You belong here. Um, this connection works perfectly fine on the M15. My phone, which is a little bit older, Z2 Force, kind of gives me a little bit like a, hey, what are you trying to do? I'm going to charge this. My phone's a drunk. In my mind, my phone is a drunk old person. Hey, 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 you. I'm going to charge this device, okay? And I'm just like, no, 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 it's a mini device. Play at sound. And it's, my phone's just, a, it's just, I'm just going to charge it, okay? And no. So it works perfectly on the M15. It'll work perfectly on yours. Does not come with an Apple connector, not a lightning connector. But that's fine because most of them are going to USB-C, right? That means the PC won the hardware for it. Okay, good, great. Um... I need to focus on sound quality because it's been like like the NX4, the Topic NX4. I loved it because it sounded aight and was super powerful. And the FIO Q1 Mark II was not quite as powerful, but it had balance, which was more powerful than the things I had previous. And I'm a big sucker for balanced output. And it was small and light, and that's why that passed. This will pass because sound quality. Of those three, of those two, not that we'll, we'll talk about you in a second too, but of those two, if I had to, all three of them lined up with this, this one sounds the best. Period. Hands down. It's not underpowered, except I will say this. I have uh, these connectors. I have the um, Zeos Future Link... Um, Link these uh, heart audio connectors because you can get like six of these for like 70 bucks. And so I was able to plug in 4.4 Pentacon and three and a half millimeter and then switch the headphone back and forth. And on low gain, it powers just about every headphone perfectly until you go three and a half millimeter. On balanced, low gain, it's fine. Three and a half millimeter, unbalanced, you might have to put on the high gain or impedance matching. And we'll test that with those, which are the Acoustic Research H R no A R A R H ones, Acoustic Research Headphone One. I'm a drug addict, and I should probably come out to you all now. Only my drug of choice is IFI Bass Boost, or as they call it, ISFI Bass Match, or no, 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 that's, that, that's power match. It's X bass, that's it, I don't know. So many headphones lack the correct bass response. This is their wording now. X bass is an analog circuit designed to add back, they, they did that, the lost bass response for a more accurate reproduction of the original music. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. It shouldn't have to add anything back. If you're, if you accurate reproduction, it should just be an accurate reproduction. What they're saying is your headphones don't have enough fucking bass, bro. It's shit, and you got to hit our button to make yourself feel good. And I hit that button on every headphone, 
And this headphone, my HP3s, is the only headphone I've plugged into the zip deck that I don't put the X space on. Because these have enough wub wub on their own. Mm -hmm. I love you, baby. These are exceptionally good headphones. I'm gonna put them down now, though. Put them down. I'm gonna unplug this puny three and a half millimeter, which low gain. I had it at some point on lower songs all the way maxed out, but that's fine. Let's put something a little bit more insane on it. So now, uh, Ether C flows modified with <sighs> Yaxi pads and tape. You've seen this in a previous review. Actually, no, you're probably seeing it in a future review because I'm bumping this one out in the 15th. But uh, yeah, these are my uh, Ether C flow. And I've put uh, AKG701 Yaxi pads on with tape because they don't mount. And my God, the comfort. But if we turn this up, once the song ends, because it just apparently ended. Low gain still. Low gain because we're on balance now. If I swap this cable out for an unbalanced one, I would need to put on high gain or... All right. It's not called high gain. This is called power match. And it has an on and off state. Power match enables a hip deck to match headphones impedance and sensitivity in order to generate their highest operational efficiency. It's a gain switch. Um, tip. For in-ear monitors, like the S8s, try power match off. For headphones, try power match on. It's a high-low gain switch. Um, there's more complication to it than that. I don't want to, like, really... They make that little power match dongle. I will link to this item in the description. I will describe it for you. It's literally a 35 millimeter or 25 millimeter. I forget what it actually terminates in. That's this long, and it looks like... It just looks like, a, like an extension cord, like that long for a headphone. And that's what it is. And what it does is, it allows you to take super efficient IEMs, plug them into it, plug them into a normal amplifier, and it actually shows the amplifier a different impedance. And I think some of them have a switch that you could switch with it, or not, but it, it doesn't, sometimes uh, IEMs are so efficient and so easy to power that it actually fucks up an amp. So, an I little IEM match, which again, linked in the description, buy one if you have a lot of IEMs and try it. And they want to try to take what they're doing in that and put it into an amp. But really, it's just a, even if that text in here, it's, it's basically a high-low gain. Consider it that. It'll be a lot easier for you to understand and try to understand that. Try everything on low first. And then try it on high with the lower volume. And unlike like when I did the headphone test, there isn't really a sound change, there's a control change and a limit change. And that's all you really need. Now I'm gonna put this back up. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna start making sounds at things now. Now, I've got this without high gain and without X space. And I'm it's just begging for me to oh I hit the button and now that light that white LED is on. That white LED is on. And now I'm gonna take a nice deep breath of my X space. And it's not just all right, let me describe the bass boost in this, because I think I did a pretty good job of describing it on the uh describing it on the Zendak. It doesn't just take the low end and bring it up. Like, that's just an EQ bump. What this feels like it's doing is what I, I said the Go Rack does. Is it takes one octave of sound higher than what is in the bass, copies it down, and adds it to it. So it's like... It definitely puts an overall warmer turn on the whole sound field. Probably 600 hertz and down... Something happens down there. It doesn't really affect vocals too much, but overall, these have now become a warm set of headphones. And these are pretty analytical, especially with, you know, these pads I found, they really straighten the sound signature out, and it's like, all right, true comfort, true analysis, you're, you're focused, but I don't want to focus. I want to have some fun. I want to pour Pepsi on a pizza. 
and then put that pizza in the oven. And I put my head in the oven and eat the pizza in the oven. That's what I want to do sometimes. And putting that bass boost on just once on most headphones, not those, but most headphones will fucking ruin you. And you're going to go, oh, bass is amazing. Now, this has a bass boost also on and off. And it does what I expect a normal bass boost to do. It takes everything under probably 90 hertz and it just goes quank. And sometimes that's nice and sometimes you just leave it off because you don't need it. But this makes everything you turn it on, just put it on, just keep. I almost wish I sound demoed amps. I, it, would, it would be too much effort to try to put a sound demo like the tracks on here and then use this on the headphone and then like am I doing like the official sound demo and I'm playing with the bass boost because it does it, it, it transforms headphones into a different set of headphones and it's not like just oh it's got bass there's a like a it's doing something to the entire sound and I fucking love it if you bought this for no other reason than having probably the best bass boost in the industry I would not judge you you're a bass head well, if you're a bass head, you know, a lot of, not, not to speak poorly about bass heads, but I'm going to speak poorly about bass heads for a second. A lot of times it's just quantity over quality. Just quantity. Shovel it in there. Fuck. I got 18, 18 inch woofers in my Honda Civic. I hate those. I hate them. I personally hate those. All right. I, I'm, you put four perfect tens in your Honda Civic. And you put enough power and then clean it up and then you DSP correct, you get my respect. That's what this sounds like. This is not 1818s. This is a very, very select bass linearity change that just paints over the current headphone and does not damage the sound. I don't, I don't understand it. IFI needs to sell me like, I don't know, you know the bags of magic rocks that audiophiles like put on things? If there was a box that they sold, just an inert box, that I could place on my desk and hit it, and everything I'm listening to now has X space, by an heartbeat. Because this is a drug addiction problem right now. I hope those words that I'm saying are just going to get my video flagged. And the worst part is that you forget it's on sometimes. Like you turn it on, just in like a, like a lightweight song is playing, something without a lot of bass. And it's just, just going through it. It's like, oh, this is all right, this is all right. And you forget. And then the, the music comes in like, wow, this sounds great. It really does sound great. Oh, shit, x space is on. And then you shut it off. And you start going through withdrawals. You start scratching at your skin. Like, and you know what? And I'm, I'm almost, and this is a, a thing that I'm going to say. When I first reviewed and uh, the Fio E10K, was it the E10 or the E10K? One of those two. We were talking about like the start of my channel. That was like one of the first things I did. I complained that the bass boost on the FIO E10K was sort of a requirement because I felt like with it off, there was actually a reduction of bass in the source signal, literally a reduction. And I would make the argument that this is doing similar, except that these headphones exist and they don't give a flying fuck which position that X bass is in. When you turn it on, you die. When you turn it off, it's perfect. But when you put these on, you leave it off and it's like, okay, I, I kind of want there to be a little more low end, just a little more low end. And then you turn it on and it's like, oh, and then when you turn it off in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, six hours, six hours later, usually six hours later, um, you're like, oh, these headphones sound anemic now. And it could just be my brain playing tricks on me. I'd have to go from here to like another amp to really... Another trusted, trusted amp to really suss that out. What I'm saying is you're going to buy this if you like a bass boost that doesn't just add bass. That completely modifies. It feels like these headphones have been modded with foam in them and different back dampening. And, and like, I, I don't understand. So that was like a seven minute rant on just one button on this $150 portable lamp. Now, the IM match does indeed bump it up a notch as far as gain. Lots. Fucking lots. We are currently low gain because balanced. 
I have not had a reason with the balanced output to put it on high gain. Um, but if we switch off of my babies again, I'll come back to you, I swear. I swear I'll come back to you. To these, which are essentially, um, these are getting their reviews shortly. Is that, oh, that might be mounted. These are Acoustic Research AR-H1s. And they're fantastically built. They sound magical. And I'm going to spoiler alert you right now. They use the same driver as the Sandy Ivis and the Civic P2s. So, I mean, maybe they changed it. Maybe they didn't. I don't care. These sound amazing. So now what we could do is I can plug in. Coming in, boopers. You got a big piece of hair stuck in your mouth. Come here. Cat problems. I'll we'll put that right there. Thank you, baby. I, I'll use that during the review. Um, I lost my train of thought. Thanks, boopers. Um, so now I have both outputs plugged into. I can hear myself again. It's super weird. Uh, we're going to keep this low. Um, when you, you The volume is the power knob. So you go click and it's off. So at least when you hit the bottom, there's a definite stop. It's not like one of these where you could accidentally go click. Like this is also an on-off with the volume knob. But when you get to the bottom, just like that, you, you like you have to quintuple your amount of force to switch it off again. So you're not gonna accidentally turn it off. Let's plug in first, bass boost off, because I just I just need to take a break, bro. I mean, I can stop anytime I want. I just, I need to just, just take a break right now. We're gonna plug it in here. Turn this up. That actually works, but now I'm gonna go balanced. Ah, it's twice as loud balanced output. So that's a negative point because here's the thing. If you're picking this up, odds are you're going to try it without balance at first. And that's fine for IEMs. Super efficient headphones. I was using these three and a half millimeter, not balanced. Fine. Efficient, efficient. As soon as you require any sort of power, power. That is when you're going to need to either go balanced or run in high gain. Now, um, so if I switch back to that, bump the power up. Now we can, we literally, it doubles the volume with the button and it doubles the volume with the wire change. So essentially you're looking at three and a half millimeter high gain or balanced low gain. They're the exact same amount of output. So, I mean, that's it. That, that's it. I'm going to unplug this now, by the way. And we're going to go back in here. And then back in here. I'll figure this out. I got this. I'm a professional. And now it should have immediately detected it because Windows 10. And we're playing. I'm get, uh, everything sounds so fucking good. It's 2020 and everything sounds so fucking good. Like, I don't know, is this the best year for audio? Has IFI finally woken up and figured out how to like focus their energy? Because they have a lot of energy. IFI puts, here, I have the tab open. Here, I have the tab open. Sorry for closing that. Here's the Zendak, which again, one of the most well-made, good sounding desktop DAC amps you can buy with outputs, in it. but if you looked at the IFI product lineup, IFI DAX, well, first of all, this isn't there, which is sort of straight. Oh no, there it is. They just added it. The website refreshed and it showed up. Trendy tunes on the go. Nice. I guess another 15th is coming up. Working with your MacBook and Starbucks? Ha ha. Running in the fresh morning air? Snoozing with your smart device on a flight? Take the hip DAC, our mini DAC amplifier with you wherever you go. Improve music on the move. Looks great. Fabulous sound. All right, I want to punch someone for writing that and making me read it. But they're not wrong. I have a problem when companies spew bullshit like that and they don't deliver. As an 
audiophile reviewer, as a person who cares kind of a little bit more about the sound and the hardware than the music itself. Oh, did you hear that artist died? Oh, yeah. Oh, well. There's more artists. Just, just as long as my hardware's safe. My hardware's safe. Which makes me a dick, by the way. But, I mean, <laughs> hardware. Um, it's all about the music. But you can't listen to the music without the hardware. So it's like it's a 50-50 balance. Feel the force. How dare you. It's all about the bass. Long may it last. What? I, I don't get that reference. Was that a thing? It's got a fan fancy adding the special GTO filter. First introduce our flagship dap the cookies and cream. Five and three. What? Oh, if you check out our exclusive IFI firmware Lemon Cello 5.1i to unlock DOP 256 for lack of, I don't know. I don't care. 12 hours. It lasts 12 hours. So, let me go back to, so there it is. This site's got it. Bloom Audio. I've never heard of them in my whole life. What does their description say? Smartly dressed in petrol blue with a touch of copper. They go anywhere, like, they're trying to be hip and cool. And when you try to be hip and cool, usually you aren't. Things that are hip and cool are what the people decide are hip and cool. But I don't care. As long as they make a solid fucking product. And this is that. This has not stopped working or not charged or froze or done anything sound-wise that is not amazing for the cost. And I love the fact that the Zendak exists because you can literally pick that for a desktop this are portable and have exactly the same quality in the sound anywhere you are. Right? I don't have to love this thing for what for you know that bullshit sitting in Starbucks on my MacBook. Ugh. How about sitting in your mom's basement with a fucking Windows 98 machine? That's the real people who need this. Although I don't think it'll work. Sorry, boys. Um I'm gonna go back to Balanced, an unplug three and a half. I'm gonna shut the fuck out of high gain because it does not need it. And then yeah, I'm gonna put the bass boost on. X space, man. It's if you don't buy this for any reason other than X space, it's so clear. It's clear, it's powerful, it's convenient, other than this fucking wire situation where you have to have this specific type of wire to plug into it. Oh, I would love it if it had Bluetooth. That, that's like a, if I had a wish list, can I add a wish list to this iFi? Could you please make one of these a half inch longer? And I don't know, $40 more, 30, I'd say, you know what? $200. 150 for this one, 200 for the, I guess they call it the hip, hip deck Bluetooth edition, blue deck, call it the blue deck, and then change the color from teal to blue, it'd be slightly different, you'll never be able to tell. But if this had a Bluetooth receiver built into it, I'd never stop using it. Because I, this, this, this unit here, I keep this around, like, I do my sound demos with it, I power my Neumanns with it. It's one watt per channel, which is double what this does, and it's that unbalanced. But if I want to actually go portable, I have to install this, and this is the new, by the way, revision of the uh, add-on Bluetooth module. So now this connects to Bluetooth, and then sends it in coax and digital, and then use the DAC in here, and then the amplifier. So this fucking monster is what I'm currently using when I'm wandering around. This or the BTR5, I guess I'll link both of them, because the BTR5 is small, and the best thing, the best sounding thing Feo makes except for the M15, that review's coming out. Um, so you have the choice of a little little baby dongle, which doesn't have many controls, and it has an EQ, or this monster, and if this had a Bluetooth, anything Bluetooth with it, and I can't even plug a, a, a dongle into it, like a Bluetooth dongle into it, because it's only USB, so you just, you're just you done. I would love to have this sort of amplification with this bass boost and everything with a Bluetooth module. That's that's my that's my future goal. See us once. Ooh, Fantastic Dreamer, Konosuba. Konosuba's great. If you don't watch Konosuba, you're a, a heathen. Heathen! 
Pasta scene Konosuba. It's so quiet. Oh, I did bad. Uh, so that was Hans Zimmer, Dunkirk, which if you don't have, if you haven't heard, if you haven't seen Dunkirk, go see Dunkirk, and then download the soundtrack so you can have PTSD anytime you want. Um, it starts off super quiet, and I cranked the amp all the way up on low gain, balanced out. And then I skip forward 10 seconds, and it's like, by the way, we're gonna kill you now. It's like, oh. So I don't think you need more power for most portable things. Specifically when you're going balanced, that's fine. Unbalanced, it has a high gain switch. I, I have to stop talking about this now because I feel like I'm in like the half hour range and I keep doing that. <sighs> there goes my monetization properties of this damn video. Um, yes, I have nothing Besides the weird wire connection, which doesn't need to be there, but it's sort of like IFI's thing, I want to thank them wholeheartedly for finally moving to Pentacon. I did it on the Zendak. I'll do it again. Because they were pretty much married to 3.5mm balanced, which is probably a better format because you could just plug a regular plug into a 3.5mm balanced and it'll be either balanced or not balanced. But 4.4 Pentacon has grown on me. Like, I have adapters on everything I have now to go to 4.4 Pentacon. Uh, adapters so yes this is now available go buy this IFI uh, hip deck and then make sure you lodge a complaint that says I am not using this in Starbucks stop marketing to me besides if it was a Starbucks product this would be white or silver it would never be this blue green it would never be something this lively if you're going to go to Starbucks and use it on your MacBook just pointing that out they're, they're, they're basically silver, black, white, clean, no emotion, Starbucks. This is way too much fun. This is the exact, they're trying to sneak it into Starbucks to break up the hold that uh, Starbucks has on everyone's happiness. Although I do like their chai tea lattes. Just, just, just go on and say that. Uh, we're done here. Um, she is available. Croppable description wallpaper. All wallpapers ever are available on my subscribe store or my Patreon. Uh, sign up for either one of those. You get to see these reviews early. This one's going to be only on there for a short time because I need to get it out for the 15th like they asked. And I only have like three days for that. So by the time I take this off the head and download it and code it and upload it to the description, um, that'll probably be tomorrow or the next day. Um, please, 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 please um, check out Hi-Fi Guides. Check out the forums. Check out the actual purchasing part of Hi-Fi Guides. Um, back to the Patreon subscribe star. You get to see these reviews early. You get to participate in the yard sale. If IFI lets me hold on to this, I'm probably going to legit hold on to it. And you're probably going to see my FIO Q1 Mark II in the yard sale. Never this, because I use this for other things. But I probably won't be selling this. M15, on the other hand, is... is baby, I don't know. Um, so your yard sales you can participate in, and if you got uh, you ask me any questions you want on platform, you jump up to the ten dollar tier. You get into the private Telegram chat, which is why I had to mute my phone because it's like 180 people in there, and they talk to each other and to me and to me and to each other, and they, they form groups and clicks and everyone who's got Arias. Oh, your Aria group. Oh shit! Like half of them in there have Army ADI twos. I don't even have an Army ADI two. Those people are crazy. But if you want to hang out with the crazy people on my Telegram. Uh, that's the $10 tier. So, got to put that paywall up. Putting up walls can make make you money, apparently. So, that they're paying the bills more than most people. So, that's it. We good here? We done? Wallpapers? Wall, well, not that wallpaper. That's boring. But that wallpaper's not. Link to all the headphones. Link to this. Link to that. We done? Cool. Peace.